Did you know that Chicago has several communities that are considered food deserts? In the book written by David Ansel, Senior Vice for Community Health at Rush Hospital, he said that the West Side food deserts are driven by structural inequality and systematic racism, and that people in the downtown loop have a expectancy of at least 14 years longer than the people on the West Side of Chicago. Food deserts are communities that do not have access to food due to poverty and do not have a lot of grocery stores. Not only do they barely have any grocery stores on the west side, but they are also taking the ones they do have. In October, when the Aldi's on Madison and Hamlin closed its doors, it made the situation even worse. Then, the COVID pandemic made matters dire because people could not travel to locations outside of their communities for food, which is where we step in and hope to inspire people. Hello, my name is Kayla. I am a coordinator for UCAN CYSC program. We're really excited to present to you our final capstone project as a group to show accumulation of everything we've been working on for the program, which involves giving back to our community in a time that has been extremely impacted by the pandemic. Through the Chicago Youth Service Corp and UCAN, the CYSC youth decided to come and ease hunger by distributing food baskets to those in need. It's our way of cultivating community happiness to the people. The CYSC are using our voices to do what is necessary to help our communities. How, so far, have you liked the CYSC program? I don't want to sound like I'm the, you know, like the person to, oh my God, I love it. But I actually loved it because it's like while we were doing it, I put my best foot forward. And I made sure that whenever anybody asked a question, I had the answer. I even volunteered other people to speak, so I, I, I enjoyed it. What did a class session look like? What did a discussion look like for you all? It was, it was good. It was like most of us uh, saying, it, there were a few students who didn't say much, but I feel like um, whenever somebody kind of kept quiet, a lot of us just picked up the slack because we didn't want, you know, our leaders to be in there talking to themselves. What are some of the topics that you all talked about? We talked about being leaders in our community. We talked about inspiring other people. They asked about what community means to us and we gave different descriptions of it. But I think from us talking about it, we all kind of learned something new about the meaning. Do you think this program had a positive impact during the pandemic? It definitely did. When they emailed me, I was so happy because I did it in the summer and it was just a breath of fresh air because I'm not used to like having something to do around this time. I'm homeschooling my son right now. So, you know, an extra income source around Christmas time was, you know, perfect for me. Did you learn anything new about yourself or concept that you weren't familiar with in the past? You know, in the summer, like I said, I did in the summer too. We had a lot of different discussions. They asked us what did we want to do in the future and I showed them how I design shoes and how I start doing my own artwork and it made me want to, you know, do more and try to make a more of a business on it. At first it was just, you know, like an activity for me. So I think that doing this program again and, you know, have, making such a difference and just, you know, the, the youth that are a part of it, it really, you know, inspired me.